Can you give the Lord a hand clap of praise in the house? Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. So glad that you're with us. Uh, so glad that you chose to be with us in the house this morning. Honored to have you. If you're visiting with us, so glad that you chose to be here this morning. And I hope that you're ready to enter in to worship and enter into the presence of God this morning. Real quick, just uh, something we've been announcing for the last uh, few few weeks is that we're going to be having a three-night revival all uh, September. I about said August. We're already in September. September 18th uh, through the 20th um, with Brother Wes Courtney from Louisiana, Walker, Louisiana. He's going to be up uh, ministering for us, and it's going to start. The 18th is a Sunday night. It's going to start Sunday night and go Monday and Tuesday. Sunday night will be at 6 o'clock. Monday will be at 7, and Tuesday will be at 7 as well. So put that on your calendar, and we pray that you can be with us um, during that time. It's going to be a great time in the Lord. Amen. Um, that's all I have for you this morning. Um, if you would, just stand up, cross the house this morning. Amen. It's good to be in the house of the Lord as always. I'm going to have Landon pull up some scripture for me this morning. And just to rehash some things that's just been on my heart since Wednesday night. But the Bible says this in Acts chapter 16. We talked about this. It says, that, And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. Next verse. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors, turn to your neighbor and say, All. All the doors were open. And every, turn to your neighbor and say, every, everyone's bands were loosed. So here's what I want you to do this morning. Turn to your neighbor, the one you just said, everyone and, 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 and all to. I want you to say, neighbor, I need you this morning. I need you to agree with me this morning. You hear that, husband and wife? I need you to agree with me this morning. That we're going to worship. And that doors are going to be open. That the earth is going to be shaken. That chains are going to be loosed. As we begin to lift up praise. And as we begin to lift up the name of Jesus. That name that I still believe is above every name. That chains will fall off. Doors will begin to open. And that people will leave saved, healed, healed and delivered this morning. You come to church just to come to church this morning. That's not what I come to do. I've come to lift up the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, not just to have another Sunday, not to have another good feeling, but to experience His glory. So if you're with me this morning, are you with me? If you're with me this morning, lift your heart with your hands across this house. God, we come before you. And Lord, we're believing for freedom and breakthrough in this house. Lord, we're not here just out of obligation, but we're here out of love for you, Jesus. Lord, we ask that you begin to inhabit the praises of your people. Let your spirit move. Let your spirit have its way in each and every heart, each and every song, each and every classroom on this platform this morning. Lord, Holy Ghost, have your way. Have your way in us. And Lord, we give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory in Jesus' name. Give the Lord a hand clap and a shout of praise. Hallelujah.
happens is we come to church and, and we think, God, I want you to minister to me. That's not what, what the church is for. That's not what it's about. That's what it's never been about. Because he already ministered to you when he hung on a cross and he rose out of, an, out of a tomb. He's already ministered to you. He's done everything he needs to do. He sent his Holy Spirit so you can have his power living on the inside of you. He's given you everything. And we come to church and listen, I know God will meet needs. That's not what I, I want you to understand. But as you begin to minister unto the Lord, he begins to take care of your needs. Because he said in, in, in his Gospels in Matthew chapter 6, if you seek my kingdom first, I'll take care of everything else. So what happens is we come into church and we think, uh, well, God, I, I need you to minister to me today. I need you to just keep me going. Uh, I want you to know it. that's not what it's about. Uh, it's so that the very throne room of heaven uh, hears what's going on in this sanctuary. And then heaven steps down into this sanctuary and then says, what do you need? I'm here because you chose to worship me. What do you need? Do you need healing? I'm here. Do you need deliverance? I'm here. Do you need guidance? I'm here all because you chose to say, fill my life till all they see is you, Jesus, because you put him first. He says, I'm going to take care of these needs. So this song is literally how our Christian life is supposed to be. Because all I know is if he's glorified, Brother Austin, he said, if I be lifted up. Anybody got lost loved ones? I do. Ben, we got lost loved ones. And he said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw them. My worship's not about me this morning. It's not about getting a feeling for Jade Abrams. It's so that if he's lifted up, maybe he'll minister to my cousins in Ohio and in Kentucky uh, that are strung out on drugs, uh, that are depressed, uh, that are looking for the next high, uh, and he'll minister to them where they are uh, because I minister to him where I am. This ain't about you. Hear my heart this morning. All I want is for him to be lifted up. All I want is for you, Jesus. You to be lifted up. Let him hear you this morning. All I want, Jesus. All I want, Jesus. It's for you. It's for you, Jesus. You to be Lord. You to be lifted. You to be lifted. Let's sing this bridge again. What you sing it like? Till my grandfather sings, so feel, feel my, feel my life.
Jesus can't resolve in time you give all cause our God he cares about us so wait on the road yes Jesus wait on the road his word says wait 
know I've taken too much time. The pastor's going to come. Austin, Brother Ben, Brother McKenzie, Rick and Jackie, they were all there. And I didn't know what I was going to do. Because I thought God was going to heal. I thought God was going to deliver. You hear me this And I remember months after my testimony, if you've been here any amount of time, I found myself alone in an upstairs bedroom in my grandmother's house, 532 West State Road, 122, Lebanon, Ohio, next door to Ben. And I said, God, I just want to know you like she knew you. I want to experience you like she experienced you. I want the faith that she had. You hear me this morning. When I didn't know what to do, where to go, he met me. And I cannot turn my back on him. You can try to explain, well, well, it was this and it was that, and, and you resorted to what you knew. No, he met me. You weren't there, but he met me. So I'm going to wait. No matter what you're going through, you need to tell Jesus, I'm going to wait until I know, until I know what you're doing in my life. I'm going to wait. I'm going to trust you. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait on you, Jesus. I'm going to wait on you, Jesus. This is it. And I'm, I'm not turning back. Don't you run away. You're closer than you've ever been. You keep pressing. You keep believing. You keep trusting this morning. Oh, I'm not turning back. Oh, I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait on you, Jesus. your hands toward heaven this morning. Love on him as pastor comes. Oh, oh we wait on you, Jesus. Oh, we wait on you, Jesus. Oh, he's worthy to be exalted and lifted high in this room this morning, isn't he? You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. May the Lord richly bless you this morning. How many is thankful just the sweetness of his spirit in this room today? Amen. Amen. What a joy it is to be in the house of the Lord on this Sunday morning. It looks like the sun is trying to shine out there after a few hours of just gray weather, but we needed the rain. 
it just could have waited till maybe tomorrow after the holiday, right? But, uh, but praise the Lord for the rain. Praise the Lord that we have the privilege to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Let me take just a moment and welcome our visitors this morning. We are truly honored that you're in the house with us today, as well as uh, let me take a moment and welcome our online audience this morning once again. May the Lord richly bless you where you are joining us from. And those of you that are faithfully joining us every week, uh, we are so honored that you take time to be with us in that manner. I'm excited today about the goodness of God. Anybody excited about his goodness today? Amen. Amen. He's worthy to be lifted high this morning. Before we get into the Word and before we go uh, to our designated places in the classroom, we are going to uh, take a moment, and uh, it is my honor today uh, to be able to dedicate uh, not just any child. It's always exciting to be able to do that, uh, but I get the privilege of inviting to this platform Austin and Kyla and, uh, and the grandparents that are here, if they would like to come as well, as well as the great-grandparents. See, it's, it's a special time today, and, uh, and we are so thankful that they get to come. And, uh, and, and I guess I have room for the sibling as well, Tyler, if you want to bring your family and join us. This is all hands on deck this morning, and Kenzie as well, and, and uh, we have... This is one of the most, the most beautiful girl in the world right here. Look at this. How do you not? Yeah. So this is not just any child, but this is my grandbaby. Yes. Can you tell them hi this morning? You're kind of dressed like Sister Catherine Kuhlman was, all flowy. And so I don't know. Maybe she's going to start a few years earlier than her. I don't know. Uh, but we are so blessed this morning to have, oh, you're tired. I haven't even preached yet. I'm sorry. And, uh, but uh, we are blessed this morning to be able to take this child and give her back to the Lord. The Lord has given us so much, and uh, we are truly blessed. Uh, I can say this, uh, not only am I blessed with two wonderful children and uh, now two grandchildren, but I'm blessed with a wonderful uh, addition uh, through Austin as well as uh, uh, even this other troublemaker back here. And uh, you know, you all know her. And Hi, Jackson. <laughs> He's, he still don't know about me holding this other one. So, uh, but, uh, but we are so proud of, of what God has blessed us with. And, uh, but this morning, I'm going to give her back just for a moment. Not that I want to, but because I have to. And uh, I am uh, not only blessed with a great daughter-in-law and son-in-law, but also extended family through Rick and Jackie, a uh, wonderful man and woman of God. And, and then we got another one getting ready to get married over there as well. So this thing just keeps growing, and we're so blessed. What are you looking at there, buddy? You just don't know, do you? So, uh, but this morning, uh, I... Um, truly honored to have this moment and uh, to have you all be part of it as well. Uh, this morning, one of the most precious things we can do uh, is bring our children to the house of the Lord and to lead them and guide them and direct them. And you and I know today that uh, there's many scriptures we could give you today concerning uh, the giving back of a child. But in Matthew chapter number 19, it says, Then were brought unto him little children, that he should put his hands on them and pray over them. And the disciples rebuked them. But Jesus said, Suffer little children, and forbid them not to come unto me, for of such is the kingdom of heaven. And we know that uh, today that uh, we have responsibilities as parents, as grandparents, as well as elder men and women of the faith in the local church. We know it's our responsibility today, and I'll address Austin and Kyla and the family behind me in just a moment, but it is our responsibility as men and women of faith to simply realize that, first of all, we are to be faithful to our Lord, meaning this, the first responsibility of parents and grandparents and elders of the church, it is to love the Lord with all of our heart, our soul, our mind, and our might to be that godly example that this next generation needs to see and hear. I am thankful 
for the names that I could mention this morning that have impacted my life. You have heard me name many of them often. Outside of my father, I could talk to you today about a man by the name of Brother Dalton. I could talk to you about Fred and Bernie Grant. I could talk to you today about Scott Smith and Brother Irvin Steele and L.L. Collins and Brother Carpenter. The list goes on and on of men and women that was godly examples for my generation and those before me. And we find that it was not just that something they took lightly, but it was something that they understood not only were they to love the Lord before us, not only were they to be godly examples, but they understood it was important for them to be trainers of the next generation. And this Bible teaches us very clearly that we are to train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. So with that being said, I'm going to turn my attention to those behind me this morning just for a moment. And then we are going to give Blakeland back to the Lord today. And uh, it's hard to stay focused when she looks so pretty because I want to play. The papa wants to come out in me. Yes. And, uh, but uh, to Austin and Kyla, first of all, I'm going to ask you just a couple of questions. And I'm going to ask you to respond by simply saying we do if you are in agreement with these things that I'm getting ready to mention before you. First of all is this, you as her parents, do you come professing Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of your lives? And do you come to dedicate yourselves to biblical instruction, discipline, and love of this child? And do you come to dedicate Blakeland today in the ultimate control and the will of God through the Lord Jesus Christ? We also now ask these grandparents as well as the church body that's behind me. Do you agree to support these parents by your example and through acts of service? And do you agree to reinforce the biblical instruction? And I hate to use this word on my own grandbaby, but discipline and love of this child under the supreme rule of the Lord Jesus Christ. If so, you may signify by simply saying, we do. All right. Did you guys get the discipline part? All right. So... Let me read this in our hearing today. And she thinks that's funny. She's laughing. <laughs> like, it's okay. Yeah. In the word of the Lord in Deuteronomy chapter number 6, beginning in verse number 4, this is what we hear. O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thy heart and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. And thou shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thy house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand, and thou shalt be as fort lentils between their eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house, and on thy gates. In presenting this child for dedication today, you not only are signifying your faith in the Christian religion, but also your desire that she may early on know and follow the will of God for her life. You also, in presenting this, in order to attain this, you're taking the responsibility, and you think that's funny, don't you? Yes. It's hard to be standing where I'm at, folks. She's wanting to play. Watch her smile at me. Yes, that's my baby girl. And uh, so in order to attain this holy end, it's getting worse all the time, folks. <laughs> Look down, Ron. Don't look at her. So in order to attain this holy end, it will be your duty as parents and as grandparents to teach her early on the fear of the Lord, to watch over her education that she be not led astray, to direct her youthful mind to the holy scriptures and her feet to the sanctuary, to restrain her from evil associations and habits, and as much as in lies you, to bring her up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. I ask you now, will you endeavor to do so by the help of God? If so, simply answer, I will. I will. At this time, I'm going to ask the church to stand with me all over this house. And we are going to anoint this precious baby girl that I believe and I say without hesitation that is going to be a mighty woman of God for the advancing of the kingdom of God. And today we are so thankful that God has blessed us with such a treasure. Amen. So I'm going to ask you to stretch your hands this way. 
and we are going to anoint her today. And in the name of the Father, we do here and now dedicate Blakelin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now, Heavenly Father, we humbly pray that thou will take this child into your loving care. We abundantly enrich her with your heavenly grace, and we ask that you would bring her safely through the perils of childhood and deliver her from the temptations of her youth. And Lord, I pray today that you would give her a personal knowledge of Christ as her Savior at a very young age. Lord, let her grow in wisdom and in statue and in favor with God and man and to preserve therein to the end. Lord, I pray that you would uphold Austin and Kyla and the grandparents and the church family, that we would endeavor to lead her, guide her, and direct her into the house of the Lord and into the presence of God where she would experience you on a manner that she would become a world changer for the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. Lord, I pray that you would help us to be that holy example. Let us walk this walk faithfully before her. In Jesus' name we pray. And the church says, amen and amen. We love you, baby girl. Yes, we do. Amen. And we have a certificate for her. I'll get to you after service today. All right? Can we give them a hand of appreciation today for taking a generation into the presence of the Lord? Jackson, do you want to help Papa preach this morning? Jackson, do you want to help Papa preach this morning? <laughs> they are not spoiled. They are just blessed beyond measure with the outpouring of love. He wants to be behind the veil. That's all he wants. We're teaching them to love the things of the Lord, and that's exciting. And me and him sat and played for a long time on the piano, drove everybody else crazy probably yesterday, but we didn't care. So it's all good, but uh, what a joy to hear children in the sanctuary, amen? And I look around, and every place there's babies, and I'm like, babies here and babies there, that's a good sign. That means the church is going to live on, amen? And uh, that, is, that is wonderful this morning. Those of you going to class, feel free to do so at this time. Those in the sanctuary with us today, I'm going to ask you to turn with me to... 1 Samuel chapter number 30. 1 Samuel chapter number 30. I will be there in just a few moments, I promise. It may take me just a couple of moments to get there. But I want you to turn with me. 1 Samuel chapter number 30. Just kind of put your finger there and hold your place. And we'll be there in just a moment. I would covet your prayers this morning as we try to deliver this, what the Lord has placed in my heart. I... I told Austin that, uh, you know, I, I was coming back down early this morning. I said, I just would like for him to tell me which direction to really go because I have labored over this word this morning. And there's much I could say that, uh, but I want to say what he wants to be said, not what I want to say. And uh, so I would... Uh, I would covet your prayers this morning, but uh, the Lord would help me for a few moments today. I want to take you on a journey, maybe a familiar story for many of you under the sound of my voice today. We're going to talk to you about the city of Ziglag that was burned with fire, uh, but we're going to dive into this story, maybe in a little manner that you have not been presented, but I want to talk to us today about the urgency of the hour in which we live. I, I stand before you today very heavy uh, because of what I see taking place not just here in the United States but around the globe. We see that our faith has been attacked on a very great level. Uh, we have brothers and sisters in, of Christ that are giving their life daily uh, for the spreading of the gospel. Uh, the recent numbers that I've seen even in Nigeria every two hours, someone is losing their life for the cause of Christ. That's kind of hard for us to get our minds wrapped around. 
but that is only one place. I just read an article this week of where now, after the United States have been absent uh, uh, in the Middle East, uh, we find that in, in Afghanistan it is now the most dangerous place in the world to be a Christian because people are daily been rounded up and are losing their life. Uh, but at the same time, we are seeing in the United States as well, we are seeing a large attempt to silence the church and to bring difficulty against the spreading of the good news. So today, I am not here from a political perspective at all, but I'm here to call us to a place of action. And if the Lord would help me, I want to talk to you about the call to engage. In our Bible, we find the word of truth, no matter what men may say, but this book is much different than any other book that's ever been written. This is the infallible word of God. This book is written by normal men such as you and I, but however, these men was moved on by the Holy Ghost. And therefore, as the Holy Spirit moved upon them, they wrote down the Word of God. And therefore, we know this, that this book is much different than any other book. It is the living, breathing Word of our Savior this morning. However, in our Bible, it is the Word of truth, but the ability to provide. And it also provides direction in all areas of our life as well as in all seasons of our life. How many knows that we go from sea, different seasons in our life, just like we're getting ready to enter into the fall season? In the natural, we find ourselves in life going through seasons where things are growing and blooming. We find ourselves in seasons where things are not so well. But we also know this. In order for us to receive these instructions, one must be willing to embrace the truth However, we cannot embrace this truth or this word by the bare intellect of men, but it is by faith. We know this, Hebrews chapter 11 will tell you that it is by faith that the elders obtained a good report. We also know this a little later in that chapter, verse number 6, I believe, it says that it is impossible to please the Lord unless we believe. Now, we know today that there is one of the greatest questions that was ever asked, in my opinion, was given to us through Jesus Christ. Uh, and you can find that in Luke chapter number 18, verse number 8. He says this, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith upon the earth? My question to you and I today is simply this, do we really believe? I'm not asking, uh, did grandma believe or did granddad believe, but, but do you and I really believe the word of the Lord? Do we really believe that he is everything that he says he is? It is only when we come to the knowledge of the truth that one can really truly begin to walk in a place of freedom. The Gospel John in verse number, in chapter number 8, verse number, number 32, it says, You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. You and I have the ability to walk in true freedom today, and it comes through Jesus Christ our Lord. Today it goes without saying, however, that we find ourselves in a season of great resistance upon the earth today. And that resistance is towards truth. We know this, uh, right is wrong and wrong is right. We know this currently, up is down and down is up. Darkness is celebrated while light is condemned. We are dealing with that which Paul wrote about in an accelerated manner, it appears. In the book of Ephesians, chapter number 6, uh, Paul was writing to the church at Ephesus, and he wrote these words. He wanted to bring them understanding. Some of you probably can quote this verse. He says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. We cannot let these things move us to fear. However, we must move from a place of apathy. Ephesians 6, verse 10 and 11, Paul wrote before he wrote verse number 12. He said, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might and put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Notice he's saying, 
not be strong in yourself, not be strong in your intellect, don't be strong in your own strength, uh, but be strong in the Lord, meaning this, uh, be strong in your faith uh, and be strong in the power of his might. How many knows that we have limitations? Uh, but can I tell you, there's not a mountain too high, there's not a valley too wide uh, that he cannot climb or he cannot cross over. And therefore today we can stand with confidence uh, and know that not only is he a man of great strength, strength but he is all one that also one that has provided an armor for his children to put on and wear what I'm saying this morning is this it is not a time for you and I to run away but it is a time for you and I to stand uh, and see the salvation of the Lord uh, Ephesians chapter 5 verse 14 through 18 uh, Paul writes and says this awake thou that sleepeth and arise from the dead and Christ shall give thee light See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is, and be not drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. Uh, I share these passages this morning uh, so that you and I uh, can be aware that there is still a call been given. Allow me to remind you today that while we find ourselves in a place of great uncertainty, we are not in a place of weakness. Uh, Because I know today a lot of people are saying, how are we or what are we going to do? Here's what we have to come back to and understand. In 2 Corinthians chapter number 10, verses 3 and 4. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Uh, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Uh, Can I tell you this morning, in front of me uh, is a group of men and women uh, that have the power and the ability uh, to turn a world upside down uh, if they choose uh, to use the weapons that God has given them. Uh, What is those weapons, someone may ask? Uh, Number one, there is a prayer of faith. Uh, I want somebody to understand uh, that your prayers does not go unheard. Uh, But just because he may not answer when you think he should uh, does not mean uh, that he's not moving on your behalf. Uh, But today, I would encourage you uh, that right now in this season of life, uh, if there's ever been a time that you prayed and not not just a prayer of Lord bless this food or Lord lay me down to sleep uh, but a prayer of faith uh, needs to begin to come from the rafters of the local church again uh, from the devotion halls uh, of our lives uh, and there needs to be a prayer of faith that begins to bombard heaven Uh, it's not about what I see it's not about what I feel uh, but it's about what does thus saith the Lord Uh, and the Lord says in the last days I'll pour out my spirit Uh, so this morning uh, it is by a prayer of faith that I'm saying God, you're going to do it again. Uh, God, you're about to save a family. Uh, God, you're about to move on a nation. Uh, You're about to touch a community. Uh, You're about to turn a city upside down. Uh, I begin to pray that uh, in faith believing, uh, and it shall be done. Uh, Can I tell you, uh, there's also something that attaches to that. Uh, It is a prayer of agreement. Uh, When any two or three are gathered together in my name, says the Lord, uh, I am in the midst, and you can ask what you will, and it shall be done. Uh, Can I tell you, Uh, We are our greatest hindrance today. But not only is there a prayer of faith and a prayer of agreement, but this morning there is the gift of the Holy Spirit. I ask this morning, do we understand what that really means for our lives? But then we find that there is the proclamation of the word. Now I say all of these things to bring us to the place that I would like to take us to this morning. In 1 Samuel chapter number 30, I am going to give you a story. And please do not be bored by the story if you know it, but let us read through it together this morning. And it come to pass when David and his men were come to Ziglag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziglag and smitten Ziglag and burned it with fire. And they had taken the women captive and that were with them and they slew not any either great or small but carried them away and they went on their way so David and his men they came to the city and behold it was burned with fire and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep 
And David's two wives were taken captive. And we find that David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved. And every man for his sons and for his daughters. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. And David said to Abathar the priest, Amalekite's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. And Abathar brought thither the ephod to David, and David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. So David went, he and 600 men that were with him, and he came down to the brook where those that were left behind stayed. And David pursued, and he and 400 men for 200 abode behind, and they were so faint they couldn't cross over the, the, the little brook that was present. In verse number 11, as they began to travel, they found an Egyptian in the field, and they brought him to David, and they gave him bread, and he did eat, and they made him to drink water. And they gave him a piece of cake of figs and two clusters of raisins. And when he had eaten, his spirit came again to him, for he had eaten no bread nor drunk any water for three days or three nights. And David said, Who do you belong to? And he said, I am a young man of Egypt. I am a servant of one of the Amalekites. And my master left me three days ago because I fell sick. And he goes on then to say, We made an invasion of the south. We simply also burned Ziglag with fire. And David said to him, can you bring me down to this company? Paraphrasing just for a moment, he said, I'll show you where they are as long as you promise not to give me back to them and kill me. And David said, if you'll take me down, he said, I'll spare your life. So it says, and he brought them down in verse number 16. Behold, they were spread abroad upon all the earth, eating and drinking and dancing because of all the great spoil that they had taken out of the land of the Philistines and out of the land of Judah. But however, David smote them from the twilight even until the evening of the next day, and there escaped not a man of them, only 400 young men which rode upon camels and fled. David recovered all that he, all that the Amalekites had carried away, and David rescued his two wives. And there was nothing lacking. Somebody say, nothing lacking. And there was nothing lacking to them, neither small nor great, neither sons nor daughters, neither spoil nor anything that they had taken to them. David recovered all. Somebody say praise the Lord this morning. Now if you'll listen fast, I'll preach fast. And then you can beat the Baptist, the Methodist, and the Presbyterian to lunch. All right? So here we go. While our world has been shaken by demonic invasion on many fronts, and is causing a generation to be overwhelmed and paralyzed by a demonic spirit of fear. It is time for you and I to once again proclaim the truth of God's word that God is still the beginning and he is still the end. There is nothing larger than him, nothing more powerful than him, but he is still all God. He is still sitting on the throne this morning and you and I today can take comfort and refuge in knowing that. Currently, we are witnessing the enemy do as he pleases, it seems, with little to no resistance. Uh, however, we are currently dealing with a society that looks much like Jerusalem did in the days of Nehemiah and much like that of David's day in Ziglag. Uh, if you was to take the time this morning and read Nehemiah chapter number 1, he would find that he simply said this, uh, how is it with everybody that's there in the city of Jerusalem? And this is what the report that he received. Uh, they're in great affliction. They're in reproach. Uh, the wall of Jerusalem is broken down and the gates thereof are burned with fire. I got to say to you this morning in the United States of America, the gates of our cities have been burned. Uh, our walls have been torn down. Uh, and the temple is lying in ruins. Uh, as well as uh, our families have once again been taken captive. Uh, if I had time to really teach this this morning, I would. Uh, but listen, i got to get to the gist of my message, but I want to pause here just for a moment. Uh, when I talk about the gates of our city have been burned, uh, it means this. Uh, the leadership of our nation uh, has been destroyed. Uh, we are a nation that is much different than any other nation that's ever been created. Uh, you may get tired of hearing it, but I'm going to tell you one more time today. Uh, our neighbors to the north, uh, they was founded because men was looking for wealth. Uh, they was looking for gold and silver. 
over. Uh, that is how Cana developed. Uh, if you go to the south of us, Mexico, uh, it was founded because men were seeking for wealth. Uh, they was looking for gold. Uh, but the United States of America, our foundation is much different. Uh, nobody came here looking for wealth. Uh, but they came so that they could have a freedom uh, to worship uh, the one true God. Uh, they wasn't coming here to worship Allah. They wasn't coming here to bow down to Buddha. But they come because we want to worship in a place of freedom. Uh, and therefore, that's our foundation. Uh, and our founding fathers, when you go back and you begin to look at their lives, uh, they wasn't perfect men. No, they was not. Uh, but there was a fear of God. There was a reverence of God. Uh, and you can look at the documents that was created uh, and how it's in alignment with the word of God. Uh, and can I tell you, uh, but now those things have been tore down. Uh, but then I look at the walls of our city. Uh, those that things that was supposed to protect us, uh, our local governments across this nation, uh, they have been trampled down. Uh, we are embra embracing uh, and we're enforcing things that are contrary to the word of God. Uh, but all of that is the result uh, because of our temples that are lying in ruins. Uh, can I tell you the platforms of the American church uh, has become nothing more than entertainment centers. Uh, we got the latest and the greatest fashion. Uh, we got all of these things uh, that we want to just be appealing. Uh, we want everybody to feel comfortable. Let me tell you this morning, uh, I want you to feel welcome here. Uh, I want to put my arms around you and love you. Uh, and I want to do that. Uh, but at the same time, I will not compromise the unbreakable word of God uh, to make you feel comfortable. Can I tell you, uh, there was a day when I walked into the house of God just because I'm a preacher's boy uh, doesn't mean anything. Uh, but when I was living in my sin, uh, when I was doing ungodly acts uh, and I walked into the house of the Lord, I knew those people loved me. Uh, but can I tell you, uh, I wasn't comfortable sitting there uh, because I thought somebody was going to read my mail uh, because the convicting power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, and I said, don't let that preacher come to me. Uh, don't let that saint of God pray over me. Uh, can I tell you, uh, but I'm glad that I was uncomfortable uh, because that uncomfortableness uh, made me move from a place of apathy uh, into an altar uh, where I cried out and said, God, forgive me of my sin. Uh, can I tell you? Uh, but now we have lost those things uh, and because of that, uh, our children uh, are in a place of bondage. Uh, can I tell you this morning, uh, it is not enough for us to sing a song. Uh, it is not enough for us to preach a message, uh, but we got to get back to where the power and the anointing of God once again uh, is moving in the presence of men and women. Uh, can I tell you this morning, uh, there's a call to engage. Uh, David uh, was out doing the right things, uh, but David uh, had left his family unprotected in Ziglag. Uh, they had got comfortable there. Uh, they was out fighting a fight. Uh, he had 600 men with him. Uh, they were swinging the sword. Uh, they was doing everything they thought they should do, uh, but they lost their focus uh, and they left their families unprotected uh, and the Amalekites came in uh, took them captive uh, and brought them into a place of bondage uh, and upon his arrival uh, he finds his beloved city Ziglag burned with fire. Uh, he finds that his wives are missing. Uh, then all of a sudden he hears the cry uh, of 600 men uh, that says where is my wife? Uh, where is my son? Uh, where is my daughter? Uh, and it became so loud uh, then they became so engaged uh, in a place uh, uh, of burden uh, that they began to say, let us just stone David. Uh, and David uh, been overwhelmed. The Bible says he was greatly distressed. Uh, he was overwhelmed by what he saw in front of him. Uh, he was overwhelmed by what he heard in his ears. Uh, he was overwhelmed by the loneliness that he is engulfed in uh, because everything that was his was absent. Uh, so then we find that David in that moment uh, said I don't know what to do uh, in the natural I don't have enough strength uh, in the physical being I don't have the intellect uh, what can I do uh, he says Abathar uh, I need you to do something for me can I preach this thing this morning uh, he simply said I need you to bring me the ephod uh, the ephod is a picture of the Holy Ghost uh, he said listen uh, the ephod was designed basically for the priest uh, but he said I need that ephod in my presence uh, 
I need the Spirit of God to give me some direction and guidance. Uh, so he takes that ephod uh, and he begins to inquire of the Lord. Uh, now listen, uh, he's got 600 men that wants to stone him. Uh, he's got 600 men that says it's over. Uh, David, it's your fault. Uh, but David gets to a place uh, where he gets under the ephod and says, God, uh, if I've ever needed you, I need you now. Uh, God, can I pursue? Uh, can I have one more victory in my life? Uh, can I get from the place I I am now uh, from the ashes of Ziglag. Uh, is there anything to be excited about? Uh, is there anything to be joyful about? Uh, is there any future before me? Uh, and all of a sudden, uh, he heard a word come uh, through the voices uh, of Saint Stoning. Uh, it says, "Pursue, uh, and you will recover all." Uh, I'm about to get happy this morning. Uh, can I tell you? Uh, in the midst of devastation, uh, in the midst of not knowing, uh, David uh, had to call uh, come to him now notice something uh, I've never preached this part of this message before uh, David comes back and stands before 600 men uh, he said I know y'all hate me uh, I know y'all saying it's my fault uh, and maybe I didn't mess up uh, but I got to tell you one thing uh, while I was under the ephod uh, I heard a word uh, and the word was pursue uh, it wasn't back up give up uh, and it wasn't shut up uh, but it said pursue uh, because there's a victory uh, that is awaiting us. Uh, I don't know naturally uh, how you get 600 men uh, that want to kill you uh, to dress for battle again uh, other than by the unction and the power of the Holy Ghost. Uh, I gotta tell you this morning, uh, the world is saying it's over, uh, but if I could just get one uh, to get back under the ephod, uh, I believe there's 600 others uh, that'll begin to dress for battle this morning. Just forgive me, Peggy. I'm still the grand, uh, the, the son-in-law that you know. I've not lost my mind. Uh, listen, uh, it's good to have them in the house this morning with us. Uh, but can I tell you today, uh, we find ourselves uh, in this story. Uh, David is like, uh, I don't know what to do. Uh, I don't know how we're going to get beyond it. Uh, but I do know this. Uh, I've heard a word from God. Uh, listen, uh, you can take it for what you want. Uh, you can say, oh, that's just Pastor Ronnie. Uh, oh, we know him. We hear him every week. Uh, listen, uh, but as I've labored in the presence of the Lord, uh, can I tell you uh, while the world says, I just don't know preacher, uh, and while even the church says, I don't know preacher, uh, listen I come uh, with a with a made up mind, uh, with an enlarged spirit this morning to tell you uh, that the Lord is saying in this hour, uh, it's time to pursue uh, it's not a time to shut up and back up, uh, but it's a time to stand and realize uh, that there is an enemy and there is an adversary uh, that's about to take a defeat that it does not anticipate. I'm hurrying. I'm hurrying this morning. I stand before you today to declare to you that what you currently are seeing is not how this thing ends. I know it may appear that all is lost. I know it may appear that we're on the verge of defeat. It may appear that things are just going to spiral out of control and it's going to get more dark. Uh, can I tell you this morning, I declare unto you that there is men and women that has been living and dwelling under the ephod. Uh, they're not up in lights. Uh, they don't have a lot of smoke around them. Uh, they're not saying, oh, I'm the latest and greatest. Uh, but it's no. Uh, it's been men and women of God uh, that's been laying between the porch and the altar. Uh, the world doesn't know their name. Uh, but out of the register vents of their home, uh, there's been cries uh, such I used to hear when my daddy was praying uh, oh God uh, can I tell you uh, that cry has returned uh, to the United States of America uh, and God has been telling them uh, pursue, uh, pursue, uh, pursue uh, so every morning uh, every evening uh, they've been going back to their place of prayer uh, and they've been praying that prayer of faith uh, they've been in that place of intercession uh, and because of that uh, there is a holy boldness is coming upon the church of Jesus Christ uh, and some of you don't know why you're feeling what you're feeling uh, but you're hearing in the spirit uh, God saying get dressed uh, get up uh, awaken uh, can I tell you that's not your mind uh, and it's not just something here uh, but it is the utterance of the Holy Ghost uh, that's saying we're about to get a victory uh, that nobody is anticipating 
there is once again the favoring of the anointed. Please hear me. Let me slow down just for a moment. David, as a shepherd boy, out in the field tending his father's sheep, on one occasion there was a lion, on another occasion there was a bear, but he had been anointed. And because of the anointing, he was able to take the beard of that beast and slay it. There was another time when he went to deliver cheese and check on the condition of his brother that there was a a, a giant by the name of Goliath. And he simply said, who does he think he is defying the armies of the Lord? And when they tried to put all this stuff on him, he looked at Saul and said, I haven't proved these, but there is something I do have. And he was leaning on that shepherd's staff, I believe, when he had that conversation. And maybe he even pointed to that thing and said, see that, see that carving of that bear? See the carving of that lion? That's my testimony. Uh, I didn't have your armor then. Uh, all I had was the anointing of the Lord on my life. Uh, and I don't know how it happened, Saul, uh, other than this. Uh, something rose up inside of me, uh, and it said pursue. Uh, David had heard that word a few times before. Uh, and he said, I found myself uh, with my hands on the beard of that beast, uh, and I slew it. Uh, can I tell you, uh, some of you, uh, you don't need to live in your past, uh, but it would do you good to visit your past uh, because there's times in your past, uh, if you'd look at your rod of testimony this morning uh, that when the doctor said it's stage four, uh, but yet you're sitting here cancer free this morning. Uh, when the doctor said the heart can't take anymore, uh, but you're sitting here healed this morning, uh, can I tell you uh, maybe you gotta go back uh, and realize uh, that you're still serving the same God today that you was then. Uh, and if he delivered you then, he'll deliver you now. We find this morning Once again, David, in great anguish, pursue, pursue, pursue. I want to ask you this morning a very real question. Is your family not worth fighting for? Is your nation not worth fighting for? You hear me this morning. The world hasn't heard what those that's been living under the ephod has heard. And there's even many within the church world that hasn't heard it. But that doesn't mean that it hasn't been spoken. Notice the definition of the word pursue. It means to follow in order to overtake or to capture or to kill. Hear me this morning. God is calling us to a place of action so that we can overtake, so that we can capture, and so that we can bring destruction to the forces of darkness that's trying to destroy our nation and it's trying to keep your families in captivity. Now, I'm not telling you in the natural to go strap up and become this crusader. No. What I'm telling you is that there's a call for the people of God to once again come to a place where we understand that the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. We are not wrestling against men. Just because you have, please hear me, just because you have a difference of opinion one side or the other in our nation, listen, those individuals, we are not fighting them. We are fighting against spiritual wickedness in high places, principalities, and powers. This is a spiritual war that we're engaged in. Now, the church in America has lost its way in such a manner, and some of you ain't going to like what I'm getting ready to say. But that's all right. I love you enough to just be honest with you and tell you this. There are those that's watching us and those that's even in this room that thinks that an election cycle is going to fix our problems. There's evil on both sides. There's, there, there, there's craziness on both sides. The only answer to the United States of America is for the church to lay between the porch and the altar in a place of repentance 
and ask for divine direction by the Holy Ghost and say, God, can we pursue or what do we do? How do we pursue? Listen, I believe with all of my heart that there is a shift in many areas and we are already seeing it. Notice with me, evil men that has given their hearts over to evil, evil men are being removed and pushed from their places of authority. We have seen that over the last several months, and we're going to continue to see that the remainder of this year. We're going to see it. But that is just the results of a deeper work that God is doing. Please hear me. Governments are going through great transition around this globe. Governments that everybody said they will never relinquish their hold and their power has abruptly resigned and walked away in recent months because, not they wanted to, but because God is orchestrating and moving in manners that is not known to men. They have overplayed their hand. I've heard this say in the spirit many times that there is men, evil men, that have overplayed their hand. But the Lord says, when they went too far is when they began to touch my bride, the church. Now hear me. This air of great destruction that we find ourselves in, while areas of it may intensify, please hear me, one of the greatest victories that the church has ever known is getting ready to be on display. The question is, will we respond as the 600 men did when David began to issue the call to engage? This morning... I have to be real with you. It's important for us to be here. We are here to become equipped. We are here to be encouraged and edified. That is the purpose of our existence this morning in this room. We are to worship the Lord. In return, he inhabits the praise of his people. He dwells here. He moves among us. If there's a need in your life, that need can be met before you leave today. I'm a firm believer of that. Please hear me. However... We're here to be edified and equipped so that we can hear the word of the Lord, so that we can go out there and change a world. The question is, are we willing to become world changers? We do that by become willing to engage. It's not based on feelings. It's not based on what you may think. But it's based on this simple reality. David, under the ephod, here's the word pursue, and you'll recover all. He walks before 600 men and says, listen, I've heard from the Lord. The word of the Lord says we're to pursue and we're going to recover everything that was taken from us. I am a firm believer that I do not care how elegantly you can speak. I don't care how persuasive you are in your nature. In the natural, it's impossible for 600 men that's distressed with great grief like they were in that moment to respond to a natural call. They didn't have that much strength. They didn't have that much faith in David. But there was something that happened when David spoke. David in that moment, please hear me, became an oracle or a voice of God. And he simply said, the word of the Lord is saying, pursue. I do not believe that they heard David's voice, but they heard the voice of God in that moment. And get this, all 600 of them got up, got their armor, and started moving. Now, out of that 600, 200 of them was so weak that they could only make the journey to the brook. But they said, We're not quitting. We're not quitting. But they took every ounce of strength and they said, we're going to go. We're going to be part of this thing. What motivates somebody? But When they got to the brook, David said, you know what? You're too weak. And I don't want slaughter to come to you. But in your weakened condition, you stay here and you guard the stuff by the brook. Because we don't need to take everything with us if y'all not going. So I'm going to take 400. So now it's. David and 400. 
And they go and they find this Egyptian boy. And I'm closing. So they want to make their way to the music. They find this Egyptian boy in the field. He's not eaten for three days and three nights. He's lying there in a weakened state near death. Sick. They feed him. And he says this. Can you show me where they are? I can show you. Now as they arrive and they're looking over, they find and they see something that in the natural is very discouraging. They see a multitude of mighty, powerful warriors celebrating, laughing, drinking it up, partying it up that says we have got victory over David. But not only did they see that, that ultimate presence of strength, but they saw their families in captivity. Now it's decision time. David and 400 men, they're in a safe place right now. Nobody even knows they're there. He can choose to do nothing. He can use, choose to stay looking. He can choose to stand and say, well, they defeated me. They've got my family. They've got my wives. They've got the children. They've got the next generation. Oh, if only I'd have been there. Maybe it would have been different. If only I'd been in Ziglag. Maybe it would have been different. He could have looked at those 400 men and said, boys, we're just outnumbered. We're outgunned. There's no possible way for us to have this victory. But David wasn't looking natural. Because David, under the ephod, had lost his natural vision and had gained spiritual vision. And when you begin to look in the spirit, things look much differently than they do in the natural. And David was no longer driven by the absence of his family. But David was now been driven by the call. And because of the call, he said, I must engage. Can I tell you, can I be very honest with you this morning? Bring me that boy. He can help me preach this message right here. He's good. Bring me that boy. He's not in trouble. I'm going to use him. Let's preach this thing together. Yes, sir. Can I tell you something? You're looking at a, a man today, and I don't say this so you say, oh, we, we feel sorry for you, Pastor. I'm tired. I'm, I'm extremely tired. Physically, emotionally, I'm tired. The weight of this thing, as Pastor Jaden preached on Wednesday night so well, he has no idea how well he preached. But the weight of this thing, sometimes I look in the mirror and there's an old guy looking at me. And I realize, you know what, I have, if I'm going to do something, i got to do it quickly. The weight of this thing. And sometimes it'd be real easy to say, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to start the transitioning process. And I'm going to start doing some things a little different. And, but then I, I look over. I look over. And I see these babies. And I see what the enemy is doing to a generation. See, maybe you don't hear the calls that I hear, but maybe you don't know what it sounds like when somebody calls and says, my second grader just don't want to live anymore.
Maybe you, maybe you don't know what it's like to hear the call of my son, my daughter, is this or is that or is overwhelmed by this. And I look and I see a generation that's just been grabbed and brought into a place of captivity. Now, I can choose to be comfortable because in this stage in my life, I'm blessed. I don't say that arrogantly. But I'm blessed. I can be comfortable. I don't have to run the road. I don't have to climb on airplanes. I don't have to go do all the things I'm doing. I could stay in this little safe place. And, but I look beyond and I see See a generation left unprotected, and the Amalekites have grabbed them, having his way with them. And now I've got to decide. In the natural, it looks like I'm outnumbered. In the natural, it looks like we're defeated. But there's a call to engage. There's a call to stand and to preach one more message. There's a call to kneel down and pray one more prayer. There's a call to go to one more unreached people group. There's a call to go and to build another center, uh, to build another facility. There's a, there's a call that says you've got to reach them. But here's what I want you to understand. David could not have done it by himself the other 400 men that was with him had, did not hear the word pursue like he heard it under the ephod but when the man of God began to proclaim it there was something that irked in their spirit and said we too will stand up and be counted I've got to ask somebody in this room today will you stand up and be counted for the kingdom of God it's not about your feeling. It's not about your convenience, but it's about this generation. Do you want them to be raised uh, under a half-moon mosque or do you want them to be raised under the cross of Jesus Christ uh, that gives life to all men? Come on, amen. Come on. I'm not attacking my Muslim friends, but listen. There's not many ways. There's only one way, and it's Jesus Christ. And I do not apologize for that. But this young man, he needs you to walk in power and authority. He needs you to bring him back to a place where he can grow and develop in the things of God. Uh, he doesn't need to be in a foreign land, uh, isolated from his uh, uh, originality, uh, but he needs to be brought back to where thus saith the Lord, uh, where the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost is flowing again. Amen. The call to engage. As we stand all over the house this morning, I have not preached a profound message today, but I have preached my heart this morning to tell you that in the wee hours of the night, in the wee hours of the morning, this week, I continually hear the word, pursue, pursue. Pursue. There's a lot of things I could say this morning, but the Lord changed my direction midway in this message. But can I tell you, between now and the end of the year, we're going to see a very, very great rustling and unsettling take place in our nation. There is going to be the appearance. And I want you to hear this word. There is going to be an appearance that evil is winning. There is going to be an appearance that evil has prevailed. 
But there is a divine setup by the Holy Ghost. It's not a large number, but there's a remnant number that God's about to bring forth and they're about to wage war in an unexpected manner. And those that thought that they was winning is getting ready to be struck down. And there is about to be a shout of victory. Not from a political arena, but there is about to be a shout of victory from the heartbeat of the United States of America because the church is about to reign in victory once again. But the question is, will you be one to engage right now? Because this young man and his generation is hanging in the balance. This morning, I'm going to pursue. I'm going to lift up my sword. I'm going to bend my knees. And I'm going to say, God, if you can use anybody, you can use me. I ask you this morning, is there anybody else in this room that says, God, I'm yours? I issue this call today, this call of engagement to the body of Christ this morning. As they get ready to lead us in worship, here's what I'm going to ask you to do. If you say, Pastor, this message has pricked my heart. I don't care if it's the first time you've been here. If you're here every time the doors is open and you say the Lord can count on me in this season, I want you to step from your seat right now. And I want you to come and join me in the front of this building right now. I want you to come without hesitation right now. Come, 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 come. I'm going to ask Pastor Jade and Brother Austin come join me on the platform if you would, please. Would you come? Maybe you're here today and you don't know Jesus as your Savior, but you'd say, you know what, I want to surrender my life to Him today. You might grab, both of you grab a microphone if you would, please. As you're coming, as they're coming, we'll make room. You can push those chairs away if you need to. Push those chairs back, I don't care. But this morning you'd say, I've never given my life to Jesus. I, I know Him, I believe in Him. But I want to surrender my life. I, 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 I'd like for you to come this morning and stand in the front of this building with us. Or maybe you'd say, you know, I've, I, I've, I, maybe I've been a little wayward. Maybe I've, I've just not been what I should be, and I know that. I, I'd like for you to come and stand as well because there's no time like the present right now. We find ourselves today with the question before us. I mentioned briefly David and the lion and the bear and the giant. But when David heard the sound in the story of Goliath of this large, this very large man crying out against Israel and the army of her, he simply said, is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? Brother Brian, there's still a cause. Our family, our community, our children. There are those of, that's close to us today that unfortunately the enemy has come and swiftly taken them. But we got to stand and fight for those that remain. Brother Chad, Sister April, we're going to make it, brother. We're going to make it. Our hearts are heavy today. Another young man, just a few days ago, believed the lies of the enemy. Can't make it. It's not worth living. We'll lay him out on Tuesday in the funeral home. Young man life still in front of him our community's hurting today we gotta engage I had an individual in my office last week pastor will you pray with me 
Yes, son, I'll pray with you. Will you pray and just thank the Lord for all the blessings that he's been giving me in my life? Yes, son, I will. He showed me some of his blessings. Then a few days later, and I'm not condemning him, I'm loving him. A few days later, in the middle of the night, in a drunken stupor, he's trying to break into my home. The enemy, enraged, blinding a generation. Hear me. We got to engage. We may not understand everything. Granite, you got to be willing to get rid of the suit and the tie and put on the muck boots. Get down in the mire and love people right where they are because if it wasn't for the grace of God, so would I be. You got to engage. So I'm going to have these young men. Brother Austin, I'm going to ask you to just begin. Pastor Jade, I want you to follow, and then I'll follow you. But I want you to pray by the unction of the Holy Spirit today a prayer of engagement over these men and women of God that's standing in a place of saying, I'm surrendering, and I will engage. And I don't want you to just stand there and listen to them pray, but I want you to join with them and pray. And I'm going to ask you to lift your hands right now and say, God, I'm giving myself to you. I'm going to be. I'm going to be the church. I'm going to be the church that you call me to be. Father, in the name of Jesus, we stand before you this morning, Lord God, in full and total surrender to you. Yes, Lord. Father, not just part of our lives, not just part of us, Lord God, but total surrender to you this morning, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. We hear your word, Lord God. We hear your call to engage, Lord. We hear your call to pursue. But not only that, Father, we hear your cries of a hurting and a broken people. We hear the cries, Lord God, of those saying, Help, help. I don't know how I got here, but all that I know is I don't want to stay here any longer. I don't know how it got this way, but I don't want it to be this way anymore. We hear the cries of those saying, I don't know how to get out, but I want to get out. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, God, burden us this morning. Burden us this morning once again, God. Burden us, Lord God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Father. Hallelujah. Those who were once burdened before, Lord God, rekindle, refire that burden. Those who witnessed everywhere that they went, Father, who found themselves busy, Lord, who found themselves saying, they don't want to hear what I have to say, who found themselves saying, They'll not accept what I have to say. Oh, God. They may act like they don't want to hear it at first. They may act like they don't want what we have to say, God. But let us know that deep down inside of them, there is a soul. There is a heart and there is a spirit. And there is a cry saying, my flesh acts like I don't want to hear it. Oh, but there's a cry inside of me saying, don't give up on me. There's a cry down deep inside of me saying, don't give up on me. But I want to hear what thus saith the Lord. I want to hear what you have to say. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
I want to share with you all the testimony just, just momentarily. My mother received a phone call this morning. My great aunt, on my dad's, my dad's mother's sister, 74 years old. The last several weeks, on more than one occasion, by the words of the doctors on death's door. But last night and this morning, talking with her daughter, can they have Austin call me? She, listen, 74 years old, lived a life of anger, lived a life of bitterness, lived a life broken by sin. Brenda, can you get a hold of Rick and Jackie and have Austin call me? I've got some questions about salvation. I'm nobody, people. I grew up on a cattle farm in southwest Ohio an hour and a half from here. Nobody knows my name. My name is not in lights. I'm not asked to preach the big meetings. I've been blessed to travel this country and preach this gospel in a few places here and there. I don't say all that to say, Austin, somebody. I say all that to say, you've got no excuse to lay on your face and petition and pursue heaven for your family members. But they said, will you call Austin? I got the phone number I called. I said, I heard you not been doing too good at feeling too well, Aunt Margie. Nope. I'm not been, but I'm feeling better this morning. I don't know what's around the next corner, but I know she said I'm feeling better this morning. And she was in her right mind. And I said, do you have any questions on salvation? She said, no, it's just something that I'm ready to do this morning. It's just something that I'm ready to do. My grandfather, 87 years old, almost 11 years ago now, walked up to the front of the altar, his body written with cancer. On a prayer service, Pastor Tim Noble, my pastor for many years, a mighty man of God said, Junior, are you wanting prayer for, are you wanting prayer for your body tonight? 87 years old. No, I've come to receive the Lord. I put him off for too long. Less than a month later, he stepped into glory. I'm telling you that to say this. The people of this world don't want to stay where they're at. They don't want to live the life that they're in. They want to hear and they want to know something that is real. Something that is true. You hold the keys this morning. I don't care if you never preach a message standing behind a pulpit. I don't care if you ever never, if you never preach this gospel anywhere that you go. On an altar. But everywhere you go, everywhere that you go, and in everything that you do, it's a pursuit. It's an engagement. It's a calling and it's a burden to say, what can I do? To let the light and the love of Christ shine through me. Shine out of my home. Who can I witness to today? Who can I share the gospel with? Who can I invite to church? Who can I pray the prayer of faith over today? Because there's a lost and a dying world begging for it. Begging for it. Begging to know the truth. And begging to know the gospel. Hallelujah. I'm going to say this and we're going to pray. 
as pastor was preaching this morning, he said the men wanted to kill David. And David goes to them and says, listen, the word of the Lord is to pursue. This is what David was saying. Do you want your families back? Do you want it back? Do you want your joy back? Do you want your peace of mind back? Do you want victory back? Do you want it back? He said, if you want it back, then follow me. Because we're going to bombard the gates of hell if we have to. To get back what is ours. To get back our children, our grandchildren. So this morning we're going to pray. God, we come before you. Right now for those children and grandchildren. And I agree with the saints of God across this sanctuary this morning. And God, we say that we are not sitting back and waiting for something to happen. But Lord, we're standing up. And Lord, we're going to pursue. We're going to take back what the enemy has taken from us. We are not a defeated people. We are not a weak people. But we are a people of power, of strength, and of anointing. And God, we come in to unity together uh, that the power of the Holy Ghost uh, would begin to work in us right now, uh, work through us right now. Uh, Lord Jesus uh, we confront the the wickedness in this city Uh, we confront wickedness that tries to come into our home uh, and we rebuke it, Uh, we come against it uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, We are not a people, uh, Lord God, that are waiting uh, to put on the armor, uh, but we are fully furnished with the armor of God this morning Uh, and Lord we proclaim the word, Uh, we proclaim faith, Uh, we proclaim healing, Uh, we proclaim deliverance Uh, we proclaim salvation Uh, we proclaim redemption Uh, restoration Uh, Lord God we are not going to be the same As as Elijah said to the people of God on Mount Carmel, how long will you hold between two opinions? Uh, Choose you this day uh, who you will serve. Uh, We choose this day uh, to serve uh, the Lord God uh, that answers by fire. And God, you're you're not looking around and asking who will go and who will I send, but... We're like Isaiah this morning and we're saying, here am I, Lord. You're up here this morning, church, because you're saying, here am I, Lord. Send me. Activate us. Deploy us. If it's in Kroger, if it's in Walmart, if it's in our schools, if it's at our workplace, activate us. Because, Lord, you've set us in this place, this city, this time, this purpose. Just as you said, Ezekiel, in the valley of dry bones. And you spoke to Ezekiel and said, open up your mouth. And began to prophesy life over death. God, I prophesy over this church that we will begin to prophesy life over death. Where people see drug addiction, we're going to see deliverance. Where people see alcoholism, we're going to see families restored. Where people see divorce, we're going to see marriages made whole. We reverse the curse. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Give the Lord a shout of praise this morning. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Call to engage. I understand that standing in this room before me today, sitting in front of me this morning, many men and women, many families here today. And we all have our host of problems and issues, challenges. And you'd say, Ron, I, uh, I've heard what you say, and I even believe what you say, but I just don't know how this is going to work out. I'm going to believe. I'm going to pray for you this morning that you get spiritual insight, spiritual vision in a level and a manner that you never have. 
had a conversation this week and it was one line that stuck out to me and I came back home and I really thought I was, I, I built a message on it and I thought I might preach it today and the Lord wouldn't release me to preach it today. There will be a day. I'll preach it. Lord willing. But there was a statement that was made and it drawn me to a very, very familiar story and I, I feel prophetically unctioned by the Holy Spirit to speak. This may not just be for everybody, but for a couple of people in the sound of my voice. I feel like I need to tell you to do something. That while we're in a season, a time of engagement, it is also a time for you. And you're going to have to do this by faith. That you're going to have to begin to prepare your house. Now we've talked about preparing for a lot of things. Does that, I'm not talking about that in the natural. I'm going to talk about it in the spirit this morning, just for a moment. If you was to go to your Bible and read Luke chapter number 15, there's a couple of stories in there, but one of those that gets a lot of attention is that which we identify as the prodigal son. A man had two sons. The younger of his sons said, give me a portion of your living. You know the story. He goes to a far country. He wastes his substance with riotous living. He finds himself in the lowest of lowest states that he could be in. And when he would have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat, it says that he came to himself. And he said, is there not more than enough in my father's house? My ser- his servants at a higher level than I am. But he said... I'm going to go and tell him I'm no more worthy to be called his son, but if he'd just let me be a servant, I'd be okay. You've heard this message preached many times. People talk about the love of the Father. They talk about the humility of the Son. I have preached multiple times, did series on this. There's so much you can dig out of it. But then you see that it says when he was a great way off, the Father saw him and he ran and fell on his neck and kissed him and He said, bring here the best robe and bring the ring and bring the shoes. And all of those things are symbolic of identity and authority and ownership and all of those things. But then he said something that never really gets preached about much at all. He turns and he says, bring forth the fatted calf. He didn't just bring forth the calf. But even while his son was wayward, he had went out to the field and he had gathered, looked around, looked around and grabbed a calf and brought it in and told his servants, said, I want that one in the stall. Day in, day out, he fed that thing. He said, you're special. He didn't let his, his reasoning be known to anybody. But he just kept feeding that calf. It began to be fattened. It began seasoned. It began to be prepared. Nobody knew why. All they knew was this. Someone of wealth at that time, they would take that calf. They would begin to fatten it up. And they said this, there will be a day that we will have a celebration. And we're going to need a fatted calf. And that could have been for any reason they wanted. But this man in this story said, there's a day. I know I don't see him today. But there's a day I'm going to see him. There's a day he's going to come home. There's a day he's going to wear my garment again. There's a day he's going to put on this ring. And there's a day he's going to put on my shoes. Because the enemy is not going to keep him. So I'm going to make preparation by faith. I'm going to tell somebody, you may not see it. It may look like it's unthinkable right now. But I'm going to tell you this morning that you need to begin to get the calf ready. You need to begin to feed that thing. You need to begin to prepare that thing because we are getting ready to step into a time of celebration. There is a harvest that's getting ready to come to the house of God in the United States of America. I want to build your faith today, tell you it's not about what you see, it's not about what you hear.
but it's about what God is putting right here in your spirit. Listen, I want you to begin to believe and believe big. I don't know what that looks like for you, but I want you to begin to kill the fat. Get ready, because we're going to be killing a fatted calf. Because the church in America and around the globe is getting ready to go from glory to glory to glory because there's about to be a cause for celebration. Why is that? It's because there's a generation that's in captivity right now. Much like David saw in the natural, there is a generation that's getting ready to be liberated by the power and the anointing and the authority of God. So this morning, I want you to be encouraged. I want you to walk out of this door this morning saying, you know what, my God's got it. He's going to turn it around. It's going to get better. It's about to get better. I decree and declare it is going to be better. Some of you need to hear that this morning. This isn't how it ends. But God is engaging the people. And we're getting ready to have victory. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we love you this morning. I thank you for these precious people. Lord, I thank you for the privilege to declare your word today. I thank you for those that are standing and sitting in this sanctuary. Lord, we're all navigating through this thing called life. We all have different things going on. But Lord, by faith today, the grandfather, the grandmother, the mother, the father, the aunt, the uncle, that maybe feel just overwhelmed and burdened down today by the weight Lord, by faith, Lord, let them them go clean out the stalls and let them get the calf moved in and let them begin to feed it. Let them begin to nurture it because, God, there's about to be the arrival of a generation. Lord, we thank you for that today. Lord, I pray that as we go through this week that we would feel your presence, your Holy Spirit would be near. Lord, I take a moment and I pray for the family that's bidding farewell to their son this week. I pray for strength and comfort to come to all that is there. Lord, I pray you continue to do work for the Richmond police officer that's hanging on for life today. Lord, I lift before you the college students that was injured in the wee hours of this morning in North Fort Virginia Lord I pray for those that is hanging on for life but Lord even those that was injured but not seriously injured that the trauma would not impact them mentally and emotionally in a manner that haunts them but Lord let them sit your presence and know that it was your hand that spared their lives today Lord I pray you'd put godly men and godly women around them to bring them comfort. Be with their families that are many miles away from them as they're probably rushing to get to them this morning. Lord, keep them safe. Lord, I pray for our national leaders today. Lord, while we disagree on a lot of things with a lot of them, and we don't embrace a lot of things they're embracing, Lord, I pray that the convicting power of the Holy Ghost would prick their hearts one more time, give them one more opportunity to make you Lord of their life. I speak to the darkness that would try to destroy our nation. And I command it to go back to the pits of hell where it came from. Lord, I speak life over our nation. I speak life over every state, over every community. Lord, I pray that there would be an awakening and engaging of your church in every every community across this great nation. Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters in harm's way today around the globe. My brothers and sisters in Nigeria, give them strength, give them favor, give them protection. Those in Afghanistan, Lord, give them protection. Lord, those that are leading the charge in Iran and Turkey, Lord, I pray you'd give them strength. Lord, I pray for my friend David. Lord, that I was privileged to work with in Turkey that now finds himself 
in Europe in a place of saying, God, as he shared with me this week, Pastor Russell, I'm really struggling. Lord, I pray you'd come to him and his family right now. Give him strength. Give him comfort. Give him direction and guidance. And Lord, help us to be your hands and feet in our our community this week. Lord, I pray for every family, every business, every ministry that's represented. Lord, I pray for the freshness of your Holy Spirit to shine brightly upon them. I speak health and life and favor in the wonderful name that's above every name, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the church says, amen and amen. May the Lord bless you, may keep you, may shine brightly upon you, give you blessed peace.